What's up everyone, Nan Man here, and it is February 15th. We've got a ban and restricted announcement, and this one is a big one because it's affecting a lot of stuff. Not only are we seeing a lot of cards banned, there's an unbanning, and there's a rule change to how certain cards work. So we're gonna do a quick breakdown of how things go in this episode, uh, kind of talk you through why certain cards might be banned, what sort of effect that might have on the meta, uh, and then sort of go into things. But before we dive into things, I do wanna highlight, um, you know, about a year ago now, um, in March of last year, I put up a video. It's like a short five minute video if you guys haven't seen it yet. Basically, it's, it's Wizard printing two powerful cards. Um, and we kind of had that discussion going with everybody about is Wizards printing two powerful cards? And the answer is yes, when we keep seeing more cards get banned. So let's dive into at least the ban list, what has happened, what's changing up, and kind of go over things now. So I'll put things up over here that way, actually, on the screen for you guys to be able to see, and we'll just kind of talk about it as we go through things. So um, I'll spend more time talking about kind of the extended formats because that's kind of usually um, what we do here on this channel compared to um, some of the other stuff, but uh, it is important to note for all the people that are playing um, on MTG Arena that Historic has since been changed because Omnath and Uro are no longer legal, which if you guys have been paying attention to kind of the Saltai power that is um, in Historic with that Uro backbone, uh, it makes sense why there's no more of that. Uh, Pioneer stuff, I'm not really going to speak of too much. I did pioneer initially when things were kind of more wild west um, as people were figuring things out and then it sort of got kind of locked into specific things that just okay this is the best let's just play this um, i think originally when pioneer was created and it was more of like oh we're gonna experiment with all these old decks that used to be powerful but now we get to tweak them a little bit like it's it's like a pioneer is this weird historic format kind of thing and it's i don't know it's this weird in between um I just haven't really played too much since the beginning, so I don't want to speak too much, but you can see like some of the cards that are being banned are those super powerful cards that have affected other formats, cards that have been banned in standard and modern, other things. Things like Teferi, um, things like Uro, things like Wilderness Reclamation. You're going to see a theme with this Uro guy because he's gone now in pretty much every format except for one. Um, so let's kind of keep going through. Uh, really, he... If this is the way that Wizards is going to keep printing things, this is not going to become a, a one-time thing where you'll see lists like this show up of these are all the banned cards. Moving in, though, specifically into our modern, because this, it's been a long time since we've seen like a huge dump, let's get rid of five cards all at once, um, because this is a really big deal. Uro is gone perfect we didn't want to see him anymore when we were talking about this uh, if you guys checked out our last video that we put up uh, on the channel that was kind of 2020 recap that was the fall of urza and the rise of uro um the shift in the meta and how much it warped the format where people were like well i'm going to be running three colors i'm going to be running four colors i'm doing all these different variants with uro as my backbone of these decks and it's the list kind of spoke for themselves with just the power level, just the card itself was too good value wise where I can trade resources with my opponent, but even then I'm gonna be gaining life, I'm drawing cards, I'm playing extra lands, and I can keep reoccurring this creature from my graveyard. So it's like there's very little downside to it when it goes long. Wilderness, or not Wilderness Recognition, um, the two cards in the middle here that we're talking about that's gonna be uh, causing kind of the most uh, issues, Tybalt's Trickery and Simeon Spirit Guide. If you've been paying attention to standard, historic, modern, legacy, you'll know that Tybalt's Trickery has been causing issues, uh, more particular with sort of the Cascade kind of things and kind of weirdness of how that essentially works. Um, so they've said as soon as it got released, it was kind of taking over and again destroying things and people are like well what's the point of me playing right now where it's either i'm playing uro or i'm going to be playing against tibble trickery and that doesn't seem like a fun meta for a lot of people uh simian spirit guide if you're unfamiliar with it um normally costs three for a creature right uh two colors and red um for a two two uh doesn't seem very 
good at all, right? But you can be able to exile it from your hand and add one red mana to your mana pool. So people would do that to kind of uh, speed up to Bolt's Trickery, be able to cast it on turn two. Um, the most not noteworthy deck that kind of in modern, um, outside of the Tybalt's Trickery side of things, um, I would say would be Ad Nauseam because it's a long-standing deck that has existed, that has been quote unquote fair i mean there's also like living in and stuff like that it's like oh i'm a combo deck but you're basically trying to speed up the combo deck so it's going to slow down those sort of fairer combo decks that exist um by removing it but free mana and fast mana is something that wizards has talked about for a while of stuff they want to get rid of and move away from um like we saw mox opal get banned um last year and stuff like that so it's like cards like this we don't they don't want in modern anymore so that makes sense two lands did get banned though uh field of the dead and mystic sanctuary if you're familiar with standard or historic you'll know field of the dead super powerful card um it's kind of one of those like check lands hey do you have Another land entering the battlefield under your control. Cool. If you have seven or more different named lands, you know, you just got to start making zombies. Um, so people were kind of abusing that in, in certain strategies. And it's basically the, the two land bands is Wizards way of saying we want to widen the format a little bit, expand it. Don't limit people's creativity and deck building to only these styles of decks. It makes it stale and doesn't work so well. So they got rid of Feel of the Dead. Mystic Sanctuary was all those blue players looking for more value by being able to take those resources that you've already commit and you get them back. You put them back on top of your library so you can use them again. So again, if we're trading resources and I've spent a lot of my stuff, you play Mystic Sanctuary, now you're getting your value back and it makes it even harder to kind of work through. So um, kind of Again, opening up deck building, making things a little bit more fair, not kind of niching in blue decks to saying, well, now all of you run Mystic Sanctuary. So sliding down to a legacy, um, very happy to see uh, Dread Horde Arcanus get the boot. Um, very happy to see Astrolabe get the boot and Oko get the boot. So Oko is banned from every format except for Vintage, guys. If that doesn't tell you the power level of this card, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what will. Now, they talked about it. Um, Wizards did, at least in kind of the write-up about this, that basically said that Oko is on the power level for Legacy. This is a card that works well. It can be, you know, right on that cusp of that three mana is kind of that limit, essentially, for Legacy. Um, and it does all powerful things that, you know, people are kind of aware of. But it's still just still real good. So gonna gonna be gone uh, they're also kind of keeping an eye on uro in legacy right now they're not banning it but keep an eye on it um dread horde arcanist um if you guys again familiar with standard or historic or anything you might have seen this guy run around he has also run around in modern um but legacy he really shined because of that ability to have all these free spells or low cost spells being able to cast them back from your graveyard it's just like the, the kind of Delver styles uh, warped into this Dread Horde Arcanist style, and it just, like, exploded in strength. So getting rid of that makes sense. The Astrolabe, just the pure value of that mana fixing. You're drawing cards. You're fixing your mana. It's just so good, especially if you're playing, like, a lockout prison-style deck with, like, Blood Moon, where, hey, you can still cast your spells no problem, even if you have all mountains where your opponent can't. So makes sense. Uh, one other note with Vintage, before we kind of talk about the rule change, um, Luris is unbanned because they, again, tweaked the way that Companions worked instead of normally just being, hey, this is in your Companion Zone, you can bring able to um, cast it, right, bring them out on the battlefield, all that kind of good stuff, basically like you have an extra card in your hand. Now they changed it that if you have a Companion, you have to pay three mana at sorcery speed, basically on your turn, to move it from the Companion Zone into your hand. The reason it was banned initially in Vintage is because people had it and they could just get it out, be able to sack things like Black Lotus, play Luris, bring back Black Lotus, sack it again, and now you have you know more mana, just pure value. And you could do other broken things like that, but tweaking it a little bit, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Vintage shifts since there's not very much stuff going on with Vintage. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Let's real quick, though, if... For people that are still watching, we're going to explain uh, the rules change um, for you guys now. 
So if you're not familiar with how things work, um, Cascade, right? So there are creatures that exist. Um, specifically, there are some that are in modern um, that people like to use. And let me see if I have one pulled up here. Uh, but we're going to pull up Blood Bright Elf, okay? Because that, again, Jund and stuff like that uh, has uh, used Blood Bright Elf previously. So here's our elf. Bam, bam, bam. Blood Bright Elf. All right. So Blood Bright Elf is a 3-2 with haste, uh, has that cascade. Normally the way that previously cascade worked, when you cast this spell, then you can remove cards from the top of your library uh, from the game until you remove a non-land card with costs that cost less than the cascade effect. So Blood Bright Elf costs four converted mana costs, then you have to cast something that costs less than that. Three, two, one, zero, doesn't matter as long as it costs less. Um, then you get to put the other cards in the bottom of your library in any order. The new way that Cascade is working is basically locking in that effect of it has to cost less. Cards that existed that are double face cards, front and back, you know, things like that, no longer work the way that uh, people have kind of tweaked and adjusted um, to be able to do. So, like, for example, if I cast Blood Braid Elf and I was trying to get out my God of Lies, right, that people have been doing to get out Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter, right, this seven mana planeswalker that basically you're getting them out early and being able to kind of warp the way that the game gets played because you can just start exiling things and, uh, yeah, it's gross. Um, so originally, uh, Volky God of Lies costs two mana. The flip side of it, cost seven mana like we talked about uh people would be able to cascade into tybalt cosmic imposter because Volky costs two mana and you were originally able to be able to pick which side you want they have since changed it so now you can only do the stuff that has that converted mana cost if i'm cascading into something that has a double-sided or maybe it's a split card i can only cast the ones that have um the lower converted mana cost. So the example that they gave was uh, Fae of Wishes. So Fae of Wishes, if you guys, again, let's, here, why don't we do this? We'll pull up Fae of Wishes now. Bam, 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 Fae of Wishes. Okay. All right, so Fae of Wishes um, is one of those weird double cards, and apparently that source didn't work very well let's do this a bang bang all right so fave wishes cost two for one four flying you can be able to pay to discard two cards and return it to its owner's hand but it also has this sorcerer because it's one of those uh, adventure cards right so uh, it's got the adventure that lets you be able to choose a non-creature card that you own outside the game and be able to add it to your hand that costs four mana three colorless and a blue Previously, you could be able to cascade and be able to manipulate and change things and tweak it up and be like, all right, cool, I'm going to cast this one. No longer. You now can only cast Fae of Wishes. You cannot cast that granted uh, sorcery adventure on top of it. So it's basically changing the way that cascade worked to kind of say, hey, no more manipulating things to do it differently. You got you to gotta play it safe. Um, Really, my biggest takeaway with how everything is going with the format, I'm happy to see Modern be able to be shaken up. I'm happy to see Legacy shaken up. Uro's not banned um, from Legacy at this point. Could be in the future. It's still powerful. Does kind of not break things as bad as some other stuff. But Oko, we know why. That's kind of pretty much gone everywhere. Uh, so we're not, not sad to see Oko gone. Uh, Uro's still running around pretty much, but it's looking like things are going to be much better for formats going forward here. Um, so I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. There'll be more Modern Meta Breakdown videos coming up. We were going to do one about Tybalt's Trickery or one of those Uro decks, and now we don't have to because Modern doesn't have to worry about those cards anymore. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you think about the, the bannings. Let me know if you're happy, sad, if there's cards that you wanted to see unbanned. I mean, we saw Lurus unbanned. Sadly, no modern unbannings, no Splinter Twin or anything like that. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below and let me know if there's a specific deck that you'd like us to talk about for our modern meta breakdown videos. But that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in and watching, and I'll see you guys in the next game. Hey, everyone. Nanman here. I'm a StarCraft II and Magic the Gathering content maker and commentator. Thanks for tuning in and watching, guys. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and check the description for more information about other content that I'm doing. I've also got a new podcast, Nan Man's Nerd Corner, which you guys can find out on Spotify or iTunes. It's got a bunch of magic content as well as other stuff. Thanks for tuning in and watching, and I'll see you guys next game.